welcome back to our course on scanning electron ion probe microscopy. In our last lecture, uh, we have discussed on how to get a good SEM image, what parameters to be chosen to get the desired information from our sample. In that regard, uh, we have uh, discussed on four major uh, parameters that uh, an operator can control. So, those are the acceleration voltage, working distance, lens current and size of the objective aperture. So, we briefly discussed about the role of acceleration voltage which is in a very important parameters in collecting the SEM images. Uh, if we uh, want to see the surface information then the acceleration voltage should be low. As you know, uh, when we increase the acceleration voltage, then electron beam can penetrate more deeper. And once it penetrates more deeper, the information signal will be coming from also from the deeper of the more depth from, from the sample. So, that is uh, we need to have a lower acceleration of voltage so that electron beam penetrates less depth in the sample and signal comes as close to the surface. Signal are mostly secondary electrons and backscatter electrons those are used for collecting the images. And as we know uh, the yield of the secondary electron predominantly increases with the tilt angle. On the other hand, the yield of the backscattered electrons or backscattered electron coefficient increases drastically with increase in the atomic number. And also we know secondary electrons have a lower energy as compared to the backscattered electron. Secondary electrons have energy less than 50 electron volts. So, on the other hand, backscattered electrons have energy greater than 50 electron volt. So, in order to collect surface information with a much higher resolution, lower acceleration voltage is preferred. So, that interaction volume will be lower or smaller and the information will be obtained as close to the surface of the sample. This is about the lower acceleration voltage. It gives surface information whereas, if we want to have a get an information the internal part of the sample to a certain depth not as much depth possible it can go up to maximum up to 0.5 to 1 micrometer we can get internal information. Similarly, resolution resolution will certainly be lower in the acceleration voltage compared to the higher acceleration voltage because when we have a higher acceleration voltage then when we can have a smaller wavelength in addition to that more number of electrons will be penetrating or incidenting on the sample. Therefore, we can have a higher probe current when we have a higher probe currents we can have a smaller size electron beam. As we can have a smaller size electron beam our resolution can be higher with a higher acceleration voltage. Certainly, specimen damage will be more with higher acceleration voltage because energy of the incident electrons is higher. Similarly, contamination we have discussed uh, in both cases contamination will occur, but more will be when acceleration voltage will be high because those high energy acceleration of uh, uh, high energy incident electrons would decompose the hydrocarbon gas molecules around the specimen and that will make a deposition on the surface that is uh, creating con more contamination, but they are not easy to see because acceleration because of higher acceler acceleration voltage incident beam will penetrate more into the sample and therefore, less surface information will come. Similarly, charging up will be more with a higher acceleration voltage because more number of electrons is penetrating to the sample or incidenting on the sample. And the last one is the emission of X-rays which is a very important uh, uh, factors to determine the composition of the specimen. Uh, acceleration voltage need to be high 
to collect x-rays of enough quantity so that it can be detected without much uh, problem. So, in, the, in this regard uh, what you have seen the effect of acceleration voltage on the uh, um, information that to be collected from the specimen. Now, you see an example here. We have here uh, the three images collected at different acceleration voltage one at the left A 1 is 5 kilo electron volt, middle 1 is 15 kilo electron volts and C is 30 kilo electron volts. When we say low acceleration voltage it is normally less than 5 kilo electron volt and we, when we say medium acceleration voltage it is normally between 5 to 15 and high acceleration voltage means greater than 15 electron volt. So, if we look at these three images then the A 1 gives the much surface images cleaner surface images we could see the surface oxide uh, features in at low acceleration voltage, but as we increase the acceleration voltage surface information degraded and with, with a very high acceleration voltage certainly we do not get very clear surface features. Another example is here for example, you have uh, a sample where uh, in this particular cases it is a uh, GC 3 and 4 polymeric uh, support on which metal particles are decorated. In the left most one this is a gold on GC 3 and 4, then middle, middle one platinum palladium on GC 3 and 4 and the right side one is a alloy of gold palladium on GC 3 and 4. So, GC 3 and 4 here in the GC 3 and 4 we have uh, we have carbon and nitrogen, this is G for graphitic, graphitic carbon nitride, a smaller atomic number uh, atoms, these, these have smaller atomic number carbon and nitrogen. On the other hand, we have, have metal particle, we have a high density particle with higher atomic number um, gold, palladium etcetera. What we see in the left side image here, you see bright dot on a little darker contrast. So, the background background is here GC 3 and 4 on which the bright dots are from the metal particles that is let us gold. Now, the in this cases if we want to see the information of the metal particle let us say gold, palladium etcetera, then we can use any acceleration voltage not an issue. We can use higher acceleration voltage because metal particles have this gold and palladium has higher atomic number therefore, enough number of uh, backscattered electrons secondary electrons will come out. But if we want to see the information of the GC 3 and 4 surface information on the GC 3 4 we must choose lower acceleration voltage. Otherwise what will happen this is a lower atomic number component specimen uh, in the specimen if we choose higher acceleration voltage electron beam can penetrate much deeper into the specimen. As we know the interaction volume decreases when the atomic number increases. So, interaction volume decreases when atomic number increases or inter interaction volume is bigger at lower atomic number cases. So, if we use higher acceleration voltage then our interaction volume will be much larger we do not want interaction volume to be much larger if we want to see surface information. Thus, we must choose lower acceleration voltage if you, we want to see surface information of the GC 3 and 4. And in the middle as you see and in these photographs what you can see from their brightness contrast difference you can easily distinguish the metal particles from the support uh, how uniformly metal particles are decorated or anchored onto the GC 3 and 4 support or matrix. Here uh, the gold particles again from the uh, scale bar you could able to measure the size of the metal particle or alloy particle on the support. In addition to that you can see the spherical structure of GC 3 and 4 
on which spherical particles here palladium particles are much smaller in the middle as you see here very very, very finer dots in this case very finer dots bright dots those are palladium particles in case of the alloy particle certainly little larger than the palladium and gold particles have little much bigger size. We can have uh, other situation and this is what again the same uh, gold palladium and gold palladium alloy particles uh, SEM and then TEM image. You can see how scanning electron microscopy image and transmission electron microscopic image correlating to it each other regarding the size of the particle. Here is the schematic diagram and how we can choose uh, why we can choose different acceleration voltage to get different information. The first case is our uh, the same cases we have discussed before. We have let us say platinum particle, let us say we have platinum particles on the carbon support. Carbon has a lower atomic number um, material on which platinum is a high atomic number metals. Uh, platinum is sitting on the carbon carbon or any kind of say polymeric or material with which has low atomic number. So, high density particle on a or thin films on the surface of low density support. So, to view the high density particles or thin film a higher acceleration voltage can be chosen if we want to see the features of platinum. On the other hand, if we want to see the features of this carbon or polymer then we should choose low acceleration voltage that is what we have discussed. We can have a just opposite situation where we can have metal or metal oxide as a, soft, uh, as a support here. On the other hand, the low density particle that is a carbon particle on the surface of the metal oxide or metal. So, now if we want to see the features of this carbon particle on the high density soft straightened support then we must use low acceleration voltage. And if we I choose higher acceleration volta voltage, the we I will not get the proper results because high acceleration voltage with high acceleration voltage my beam electron beam will penetrate more deeper and information will be coming from depth of the sample without giving the surface features of carbon particle. Therefore, I must choose or we must choose low acceleration voltage to see a low density particle or thin films on a high density support or substrates. For if we want to see the surface features of here that is a high density support then we can choose any acceleration voltage not an issue. Then we can also have that the low or high density particle is embedded into the low density support as you see in the top. So, now if I want to see this uh, high density particle in inside embedded inside the low density substrates then I must we must choose high acceleration voltage because I we want electron beam to penetrate and having a little higher introduction volume. So, that information come from the platinum particle more number of backscattered electrons will be coming out and then I will get more brightness wherever the high density particles are embedded or sitting inside the low density particle. On the other hand, if I you if I want to see the surface of low density support, then I must choose low acceleration voltage. If I choose high acceleration voltage, it will not help us because electron beam will penetrate more and giving internal information. So, in order to get surface information of low density support, we should use low acceleration voltage. And the fourth case, another case is that your low density particle is embedded inside high density substrate or matrix. In these cases, if you choose low acceleration voltage, you will see the surface of high density material surface. If you choose a lower acceleration voltage, if you choose higher acceleration voltage again the same features you may get in, in inside information because more number of backscattered electrons will emerge from here and giving the higher brightness this become featureless this we would not able to detect. So, in that cases if the low density particle or film is inside the high density support then 
we must do a cross-sectional imaging. We cannot look at the surface and know about it. So we should have, the, we should do the cross-sectional imaging. On the other hand, if the high densities, if we want to see the high density support surface, then we can choose any X-ray voltage, not an uh, problem here. Then we can also have uh, certainly lower density support surface that we have discussed lower acceleration voltage no doubt. If we cut with a uh, materials with a let us say high density metals normally for some kind of uh, insulating sample we cut with a conducting uh, film to avoid the charging normally we do either gold or palladium uh, or um, palladium platinum alloys etcetera then we can uh, use wide range of acceleration, acceleration of voltage. In this way, we can choose different acceleration of voltage to know about the sample surface structure and what the information we are looking for. Then second thing is that condenser lens current. After electron guns, then we have a condenser lens current and that condenser means it will condense the electron beam to make it a smaller beam. So, when condenser lens current is low, then condenser lens strength is low and condenser le strength when lens strength is low, it cannot condense much. Therefore, beam size will be larger or beam diameter will be larger. When lens current is low, that means my our condenser lens strength is low and therefore, condenser lens strength is low means it can cannot condense the electron beam to a very finer one. Therefore, beam diameter is large. When beam diameter is large, prop current is large. Prop current is the current on the specimen when the beam falls, specimen current will be large. On the other hand, when condenser lens current is high, then lens strength will be more. When lens strength is more, we can make it much finer. So, therefore, when the beam size is much finer, electron beam diameter will be smaller. Therefore, prop current will be small. They are all interrelated. Then, if I have larger current, larger current means more signal will come, more secondary backscattered electrons will come and in the, that the S and by ratio, signal to noise ratio will be better is if I have a larger current. But in, in when current is small, signal by re, uh, noise ratio will be not good. Charging up, more current here producing, more prop current means more charging. On the other hand, small current means less charging, no doubt. Similarly, large current, mean, large current means specimen will be damaged more small current means specimen will be damaged less. So, these are direct uh, correlated, these are correlated with the beam diameter and as the beam diameter is large, signal by noise ratio will be more, charging up will be more, specimen damage will be more. This is the effect of condenser lens current. Then whether I need a higher condenser lens current or more, um, that means low, uh, small lens current. It, uh, it is important to know what information I, I am looking for. If I am looking for a very high resolution image, in that case uh, for a high resolution image I must choose condenser lens current to be high so that my electron beam size to be small. If the electron beam size diameter to be small, then I can collect information from a smaller area. That smaller area means I can have, can get a better resolution if I want a better resolution or high resolution image. But uh, certainly in that process, I will also reduce the signal to noise ratio. So, and I will also reduce the prop current. So, prop current should be optimum to provide me enough signal so that I could also able to see the features on the surface of my sample. So, I must have minimum prop current to study uh, the surface uh, morphology or topology. Here you see the example. As you see here in the A, uh, here three cases is there. Um, as you see here um, in case uh, prop diameter will decrease if lens current is high, if prop diameter will decrease if lens current is high, but prop current will decrease and that may not provide enough signal. So, in the left side one A1, we have a smallest prop size, smallest prop size of 15 nanometer and that prop current is 1 pico ampere 
And now what you see here the resolution is not very good because signal to noise ratio is poor. Because prop current is small, signal to noise ratio is small, therefore I we do not see very clear images. But in case of B, small prop size and adequate current, small prop size not uh, smaller than before, it is now 20 nanometer with a higher prop current of 1 pico ampere. So, it has adequate current because of adequate current you can see here the roughness of this ridge which with a much higher resolution. The clarity of the surface is much better, the edges and the surface information are um, uh, much clearer and it can be distinguished uh, that the roughness on this uh, on this steps are clearly seen. On the other hand, when we choose a higher prop, uh, uh, higher current mode, that means our um, beam size is too large and beam size is too large means dp is 1, 130 nanometer, current will certainly will increase. The problem is here as the uh, beam diameter is quite large, my resolution will also be poor. As you see here, you do not see the ridges that you see here because of the poor resolution. Here the prop size is much larger, I am like prop size here let us say small here prop size is more. So, now in a bigger prop size I am getting information from a larger area therefore, here I can getting information from smaller area. If there is two features close by I can distinguish these two features here resolution is be more, but here I cannot distinguish uh, if there is two features inside, inside one prop, one prop diameter. So, that is why a larger prop diameter is not suitable for high resolution imaging we must have the prop diameter as small as possible while having enough prop current to get uh, sufficient signal um, for our um, measurements. Then we have objective lens aperture size and diameter. We have a beam diameter that is optimum when objective aperture diameter is small aperture diameter is small, then we have small prop current because small beam diameter. On the other hand, when aperture diameter is large, my beam diameter will be more, therefore current will be more. And when aperture diameter is small, aperture diameter will be small, then aperture angle that is alpha will also be smaller, aperture angle will be small. When aperture angle will be small, we, have, we will have a larger depth of field, we have a larger depth of field. On the other hand, when aperture diameter is large, aperture diameter is large here, then we have a shallow depth of field, we will have a shallow depth of field. So, aperture diameter is large is good for high resolution imaging because here this prop size will be smaller then we have a shallow depth of field or small depth of field. Then again Im uh, image signal to noise ratio as prop current is small here SN by signal to noise ratio is low whereas here prop current is more signal to noise ratio is high. So, this is the effect of uh, objective length, length aperture size on the information we are looking for. In particular, uh, if I want to see uh, a large area, large area specimen with all area are properly focused, with all area pro properly focused, then I should choose a smaller aperture diameter because in this case depth of field is large or deep so that I can have focus throughout the specimen. On the other hand, if I want to see a higher resolution, uh, higher, higher resolution sample uh, higher resolution um, uh, resolution image then I should choose aperture diameter to be large. So, when a high resolution we, we normally um, examine small area. So, uh, the smaller depth of field is acceptable. Here you see the difference uh, in the left side one as you see in the left side one there is no clarity of uh, the image or the specimen surface throughout the area like 
in the top uh, right uh, you we do not see it which is a quite dark in this case quite dark very less signal is coming out and because of uh, small uh, depth of field. But in this cases right case the image is quite clear throughout the re, uh, throughout the area we are investigating and we could see uh, everywhere the image is focused because it has a smaller angle of aperture or beam divergence angle that is alpha. The smaller the beam convergence angles larger will be depth of field larger uh, depth of field. So, that is why depth of field that is why we could see the whole image are well focused. On the other hand it is not in other cases where the objective uh, where the convergence angle is more then we then if we see the effect of working distance as you know working distance is the distance between the objective lens and the focal point the last part of the lens that is the objective lens and the focal point. Now, if the focal length is short if the focal length is short then we have to have objective lens strength to be more strong that means, focal length is short means we have to have uh, more uh, current in the lens current lens strength to be more when lens strength to be more beam size will also be smaller and focal length will be also smaller it is just opposite in other cases uh, objective lens strength when weak then beam size will be also beam diameter will be uh, bigger and focal length also will be bigger when focal length is bigger then depth of field will be larger when focal length is shorter depth of field will be small and electron beam diameter certainly when a smaller focal length the electron beam diameter will be small on the other hand it will be large here. So, for high resolution imaging we should choose short working distance short working distance. for uh, low resolution imaging if we want to see from a, uh, for a larger area sample throughout the region we have well focused then we should use long working distance which has a larger depth of field. So, this is the uh, effect of working distance on collecting uh, for collecting the uh, images. So, what we have seen the effect of acceleration voltage effect of um, um, objective lens aperture condenser, condenser lens strength and also effect of working distance. So, in conclusion suitable parameters should be chosen to obtain the desired information from this specimen we should know what type of sample we have and what information we are looking from the sample. So, accordingly uh, the suitable parameters must be chosen to collect the image higher or medium acceleration voltage can be used for high density sample whereas, for low uh, low acceleration voltage should be used for low density sample. Also I, I also want to um, include one more point here that if you want to see the high resolution surface image or topology of the sample then preferably lower acceleration voltage or lower acceleration voltage is preferred because it will have a smaller um, interaction volume. Similarly, smaller objective aperture or long working distance is preferred for larger depth of field uh, to collect the image with a larger depth of field well focused throughout the specimen or area under investigation. Similarly, larger objective aperture and smaller uh, working distance is prepared for high resolution imaging. These are the some of the important points uh, that also take care. So, summary of the electron microscopy is that our electron beam is falling on the sample. Then we have secondary electrons which is more closely comes from the surface close to surface. Then below below which we have backscattered electrons coming backscattered electrons are coming. BIC are coming. Then from other region we, we will have a X rays. So, secondary electrons are prepared for surface topology, surface topology and backscattered electrons for elemental composition, composition, orientation of the crystal. Um, whether material is crystalline or amorphous all these information will give the secondary electrons and we will be discussing uh, in next uh, couple of lecture 
how the crystallinity of the materials can also be uh, uh, found using the scanning electron microscopy and how the X-rays energy of the energy of the X-ray can be used to know the composition of the material. So, this we will see in next couple of lecture. So, these are the references and uh, thank you very much.